in most video games which have a grenade you're going to see that you're going to have a predicted path for it so in today's video we are going to learn how to create that and we are going to represent that in our world so this is only going to be a basic system as well what you could do is to create an actual line from your character to the end and represent it but for today's video we are just going to have a beginner friendly tutorial so now let's see how we can actually have a projectile path predicted and also launch a projectile based on that so first let's go to edit project settings let it load a little bit go to input and let's create an action mapping we are going to give it a name and we are going to put there a button for me that is left mouse button back into our character we are going to call it so action events fire and now we want to see uh, when we want to spawn the grenade or the projectile and how we want to predict the path so let's get the logic done a little bit we want let's say every 0.05 seconds to update the predict path or you can even do that faster so what we need to do is to have here so set timer by function name what this is going to do is that it's going to loop if we are going to check looping a function or a custom name or custom event every 0.01 seconds let's say as an example but actually let's put this 0.02 and now we're going to need to have a custom event so add custom event predict projectile path and let's copy this name and paste it in the function name and now this is going to this is going to loop and now what we are going to need to do is to actually have a prediction path right so predict projectile path and we are going to get the predict projectile path by trace channel all right so this is kind of like a line trace by channel so from the starting position what we are going to do is that we are going to get actor location plug this into the start get the launch velocity so in the launch velocity what we are going to do is that we are going to get the actor location going to get the forward vector so forward vector of the camera and I'm going to multiply this with the float all right I'm going to multiply this with let's say 2500 so vector or float and here 2500 going to go into the draw debug type going to set here for duration the duration is going to be 0.02 actually 0.02 all right and then in the max sim frequency we are going to set this to be 30 so this is going to set how many spheres we want to have in a predict projectile path all right so let's see if this is working so it seems that it is not working but it is there so let's see what we have, we have done wrong in here so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to get a four vector I'm going to multiply this with the float once again let's see 75 and I'm going to add these two vectors up so vector plus vector I'm going to plug this into the start position let's see all right so as you can see everything is working just fine we are going to have a little bit of lag because they are going to get spawned every 0.02 seconds all right and what i did here let me explain real fast if i'm going to go into the viewport i'm going to get the actor location let's say that the actor location is this dot right here we are going to get a forward vector represented by the red arrow and we are going to multiply that with a, uh, with 70 uh, with 75 units that means float so we are going to set the location to be somewhere here on the red arrow in front of the actor all right and now what we'll need to do is to let's get first the projectile and spawn it so we are going to need to create another actor by going to the content browser right click in there blueprint class actor and name it as my, uh, how you want then let's get into it and what I need to do here is to get a sphere then a sphere collision right and we are going to need to make the sphere 
So not the sphere collision, but the sphere, the static mesh, to be the default scene root. So let's get it from the components and drag and drop over the default scene root. So that now it is going to disappear and you're going to see that the sphere is going to be instead of it and everything is going to be just fine. And as well, you're going to notice that you've done, you've done it right if you're not going to have here any location or rotation. But I don't need this right now because I already have one. So let's just delete it and back into our projectile. I have nothing in the event graph, but you can add here, let's say, events, from events, blueprints and stuff, let's say, on common and begin overlap and end overlap and do whatever you want with this. But I'm not going to. So back into our character. Once we release the input action, we want to spawn actor from class and I'm going to spawn the projectile as I said. Alright, then from the spawn transform I'm going to make a transform. So this way I can set the location, the rotation and the scale when we are going to spawn the actor. The location I want to be exactly this. Alright, so let's just copy it. Plug this in the location. The scale, I think it's okay. No, it's a little bit too big. So let's set this to 0 .5, uh, 0 0.4 for every of the axes. Alright, and now let's see what we have for uh, until now. We have here a projectile and a predict path. But there are two wrong things. The predict path is not going to disappear and the projectile is not going to go on the predicted path. So what we can do here to make sure that it is going to go on the predicted path from the return value we are going to get sphere that is going to be the static mesh and I'm going to add impulse I'm going to plug this to in going to make sure that I'm going to check velocity change right and I'm going to get this right here the camera forward vector and multiply with the float that is 2500 let's see if this is working now so as you can see it went straight on the predicted path so this is pretty much everything for the actually to for the actual spawning and the path now what we need to do is to make sure that the predicted path is not going to be shown after we're going to spawn the actor so what we can do is that we can clear and invalidate timer by handle from the return value so clear and invalidate uncheck this from here and plug this to in let's see if this is working right I think works just fine but now we need to do one more thing I'm going to make this the draw debug type to none because I don't want to see it anymore but now let's set to have a, re a red sphere at the end which is going to represent where it is going to hit so from the return value right here I'm going to have a condition so a branch I'm going to check if we hit something or not that is represented by a red dot at the end so let me change this for this so there you can see a red sphere at the end that means that we are going to hit something and if we hit something we are going to break the hit result get the impact point and again we are going to set the location of a component but currently we don't have it so let's create a component in our viewport it's going to be a sphere all right the sphere is going to be pretty small so 0 0.5 let's say we are not going to have any collision at all it's not going to simulate physics either either and it's going to be uh hidden for for the owner so let's see visibility i'm going to uncheck visible all right Let's see if we don't have a hidden for honor. So, hidden for honor. No, we don't have one. But we are just going to make the visibility to be false. All right. And then what we are going to need to do is to get an impact point. So, impact point, set sphere location. Set sphere world location. If this is true, we are going to set it. The location is going to be the impact point going to set the sphere to be to be visible so set visibility it's going to be true and then 
what we are going uh, once we are going to clear an invalidated timer by handle we are going to copy this set the visibility to be false and then we're going to set the new location to be 0 0 and 0 All right and then let's create here a material I'm going to call this predict project all path path and I'm going to add sphere as well all right I'm going to get it from the emissive color a multiply node I'm going to get a constant to vector I'm going to make it red I'm going to multiply this with a constant constant that is going to be let's say 20 all right and now we are going to go to our character sphere and set the material so let's see if this is working so right there at the end you can see a little sphere so let's make it a little bit bigger I'm going to make it 1 and now you should be able to see it better all right so as you just saw the projectile went exactly to the sphere and everything worked just fine you might notice that it the crosshair is not lined with the sphere and that is because the crosshair itself isn't centered on the screen so that's why it doesn't look that good so as you could saw right, like, right there everything is working just fine and it's pretty much all you have to do to have a predict uh, a projectile which is going to be predicted by a path so it's pretty much all for today's video i hope that you enjoyed it and if you did don't forget to leave a thumbs up and also if you're new here don't forget to subscribe to the channel to show me your support and also to stay up to date with new videos pretty much every two to three days so as i said it's pretty much all for today's video and i'm going to catch you in the next one goodbye